everyone. This is Karen. Hello, everybody. I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of Victoria Arlen, victory against all odds, and the vocabulary words are conquer. Conquer. It took Billy some time to conquer his fear of spiders. Ah! Overcome. Overcome. She overcame her personal problems to become the best student in class. Hmm. Constantly. Constantly. Fashion is constantly changing, so it's hard to keep up with it. Thankfully. Thankfully. Thankfully, someone was able to show me the way to the bookstore. Ah, so nice. Blink. Blink. Let's play a game. Whoever blinks first is the loser. I lose. Yes, I won. <laughs> okay, we're talking about someone really, really amazing. Ooh, there's something about blinking in here, isn't there? That's right. Oh, I remember who we're talking about, Victoria Arlen. That's right. Who is Victoria Arlen? Well, Do I you know, know that she's really famous Paralympic swimmer, like gold medal swimmer, mm -hmm. and she's on Dancing with the Stars. Yes, that's, that's the person, right? right. That's right. She's known right. and very famous for that. But you know, a lot of people have been on the show. But why is she so unique and special? Do you know? Well, I know she got really sick when she was a young girl, like eleven a, years old, and she was in a coma for like three and a half years. So she was basically in a, you know, like she was a vegetable. She well, couldn't then, move. Well, she, she woke really up move. from the coma, right? That's and right. And then she still couldn't move. Mm-hmm. So then she was like a vegetable, like awake. But can't even move. Yeah, and that that went on for a long time. The doctors told her parents that you know she's gonna stay like this forever. Because yeah, eventually she learned, like she was able to communicate by blinking, and she started to get her to be able to talk again. But then they said she's gonna be in a wheelchair That's for right. the rest of her life, and she was like, I'm not going to let that get me down. That's right, and she never gave up. Wow. So let's learn more about this amazing girl. So Victoria, inspirational. That's right, Victoria Arlen. Victoria Arlen, victory against all odds. 24-year-old Victoria Arlen has a saying, face it, embrace it, defy it, conquer it. This attitude is what drove her to overcome disability and become a Paralympic gold medal swimmer, an ESPN host, and a motivational speaker. Today's lesson is called Victoria Arlen, Victory Against All Odds, Part 1. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. And yes, in our personality profile this month, we have someone who I have to admit I had never heard of before reading this article. But after reading both days of our article, I'm happy to say that I've discovered a new person who I'm going to admire and cheer for. She's faced a lot of challenges and really come through with a great attitude. So let's get started. 24-year-old Victoria Arlen has a saying, face it, embrace it, defy it, conquer it. Hmm, sounds pretty good to me. Anyways, before we move on and learn more about Victoria Arlen and her saying, let's talk about the verb conquer. If you conquer something in this case, you overcome that thing. You beat that thing or you defeat that thing. That thing is oppressing you, keeping you down, and then you overcome it, like I said before. Before it was a problem, but then you handled it. You took care of it. You conquered it. Now, otherwise, this verb conquer can refer to taking something over, like sometimes one country invades another country. And if that first country wins, you can say that that country conquered that other country. But that's not the case here. Anyways, for example, it took Billy some time to conquer his fear of spiders. Before, he was afraid of spiders, but that's no longer the case. Good for him. He has overcome his arachnophobia. That's the fancy name for a fear of fear spiders. spiders. Well, yeah. good for him. Let's get back to Victoria Arlen and find out what she has conquered in her life. It says this attitude, her very positive attitude, this attitude is what drove her to overcome disability and become a Paralympic gold medal swimmer, 
an ESPN host, and a motivational speaker. Wow, that is pretty amazing. Yes,、yeah, she. So we learn that she has overcome some big challenges in her life, and she has then gone on to become a big success. Just earlier, we talked about this word to conquer. Well, to overcome is another verb, and it means very much the same kind of thing. When you take on a tough challenge, when you test yourself to a very high level and try to do something difficult, and then you succeed, you win, you go through with what you tried to do. You have overcome the challenges. You have overcome the difficulty. Bravo for you. For example, we could say she overcame her personal problems. To become the best student in class, well, good for her. I wonder if she overcame her arachnophobia as well. We'll have to leave that as a mystery of the universe because right now it's time for a break, and we'll be back with more about Victoria Arlen. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny. 今天的课文标题是 Victoria Arlen. Victory against all odds. 好，其中这个 against all odds， 它表示排除万难。那谁是 Victoria Arlen 呢？我们先来听听看她曾经说的一句话，叫做“面对她，接受她，挑战她，征服她”。那么 Victoria Arlen 维多利亚亚伦，她就是用这样的态度来克服残疾，并且还成为残障奥林匹克运动会的游泳金牌选手，还有 ESPN 体育节目的主持人，还有励志的演说家。我们先来看两个单字 ，conquer，conquer。Conquer, Conquer, 它是动词，表示克服或是征服。那当我们被某事物压迫的时候，就要去克服它嘛。那么 Jeff 老师刚,刚用到 oppress 这个字 ，o p p r e s s。Oppress， 它表示压迫或是压制，是个动词。那么单词例句提到说 ，Billy 他花了一些时间来克服对蜘蛛的恐惧。这时候 ，Mike 老师提到一个专有名词叫 arachnophobia， 它拼作 a r a c h n o p h o b i a。这个字表示蜘蛛恐惧症 ，arachnophobia。好，下一个单词 overcome。Overcome， 它是动词，表示克服、战胜。那它的三态是 overcome, overcame, overcome。好，再来看补充单词 embrace。Embrace 有拥抱的意思，它也可以表达欣然接受。那么 defy，defy defy 它表示反抗或是向什么什么挑战。那另外文中用到 disability 这个字，它有缺陷或是障碍的意思。那在课文里面，它是用来指身体上的残疾。至于 Paralympic, Paralympic， 它是形容词，形容残障奥林匹克运动会的。好，那么 Paralympic Games 就可以用来指残奥会，然后你也可以把它称为 Paralympics。这回到课文中。Victoria Arlen, Victory Against All Odds. Arlen was an active child who enjoyed swimming and dancing. However, when she was 11 years old, she suddenly got sick. Her condition got worse and worse until she fell into a coma. Three and a half years later, her mind awoke, but her body didn't. She could hear the outside world, but no one was aware of this. She recalled hearing doctors tell her family she probably wouldn't make it. She said, "I was constantly fighting this pull to just give up, but I had so much I wanted to live for." All right, everyone. We are talking about Victoria Arlen. Let's continue reading. Okay, Arlen apparently was an active child who enjoyed swimming and dancing. Okay, she was a happy, active child, and then something bad happened. Yes. However, when she was 11 years old, she suddenly got sick. Ooh, that's not good. And it wasn't just sick with a cold or a flu or something like that. It was serious. Next, it says her condition got worse. In other words, she got sicker. Her condition got worse and worse until she fell into a coma. Yes, this is very serious. When you're in a coma, basically it means you're unconscious. You're sort of like you're asleep, but you can't wake up. There's been damage to your body or your brain, and your body basically shuts down, and it can shut down, or you can be in a coma for quite a long time, and that seems to be what happened here. Three and a half years later, she was in the coma 
asleep, unconscious, for three and a half years. That's amazing. And then three and a half years later, her mind awoke, but her body didn't. Oh, earlier wow. we talked about how she was involved in the Paralympics. So yeah. before, when she was young, she, she was active and she liked to swim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Later on though, because of this coma, she lost control of her body. Yes, her mind awoke, but her body didn't. And when I say she lost control of it, what I meant to say was that she couldn't control it anymore. She was paralyzed. So she's yeah. sort of trapped inside she's, her own she body. She can't move her arms and her legs. She has lost control of them in but that she sense. she can hear things but and smell things around the her. The brain is working. Wow. All of her brain is working, just her body isn't working. That's Anyways, crazy. get this, she could hear the outside world, but no one was aware of this, okay? She recalled hearing doctors tell her family she probably wouldn't make it. So she woke up and she could hear, but no one knew this. Apparently she couldn't tell people this yet because her body didn't work, not even her mouth worked. So imagine waking up from a sleep, your body is frozen, but your mind is completely normal. You just can't do anything. Here's her own words. She said, I was constantly fighting this pull to just give up, but I had so much I wanted to live for. This went on a long time, so she had to fight this all that time. That's why we use the adverb constantly. She was constantly fighting to try to wake her whole body up. There you go, she never stopped. She wow. did this constantly, continuously. Yes, that's what the adverb constantly means. Without pausing, without stopping, you keep on doing something, you don't quit. For example, fashion is constantly changing, so it's hard to keep up with it. Yeah, I'm always out of style because I don't follow fashion. Fashion is constantly changing and really hard to follow. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. When we come back, we'll learn some more about Victoria Arlen and how she pulled herself through this terrible situation. 维多利亚·亚伦过去是一个活泼的孩子，他喜欢游泳，喜欢跳舞。只是在他十一岁的时候，他突然生一场大病，这个健康状况呢每况愈下，直到他陷入昏迷状态。三年半后，他才醒来哦。可是这时候，只有他的头脑苏醒，身体却没有。亚伦当时可以听到外界的声音，可是却没有人知道这件事情。那他记得当时还有听到医生告诉他家人说，他可能撑不下去了。他不断地去对抗这些放弃的念头，跟这一股拉力来奋战。他有很多很想要好好活着去做的事情。好，这边有一个单字叫 constantly。constantly， 它是副词，表示持续不断地或者是总是。那 Jeff 老师在解释单字时用到 continuously， 这个字是拼作 c o n t i n u o u s l y。continuously， 它是用来表达连续的或是不断地。好，那么文中的 coma， coma 它表示昏迷或是昏迷状态。当我们说 fall into a coma， 就表示陷入昏迷状态。接下来课文中 ，Victoria Arlen, victory against all odds. Thankfully, Arlen's family never gave up on her. One day in 2010, Arlen was finally able to send a signal to them. She blinked. After that, she slowly learned how to move, eat, and speak again. She was practically her old self, except that her legs were paralyzed. Doctors said she would be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life, but she didn't let this get her down. Okay, before the break, we learned how Victoria Arlen woke up from a three and a half year coma only to find that she no longer had control of her body. She was paralyzed, she couldn't move. Apparently, she could only hear, okay? She could hear, but no one knew that she could hear. That's right, she could hear doctors giving her parents bad news that maybe she'll never wake up. And of course, this was a big struggle for Arlen being frozen inside her body, but having her mind still be awake. But there is good news. It says, thankfully, Arlen's family 
never gave up on her. They would hear the doctors giving them this worrying news and scary information, but they're like, "We believe our daughter will fight through this. She will get better." So, of course, this is something that happened in the past, but we're really glad it happened. That's why we can use this adverb, thankfully. Exactly.、I'm、so relieved. That's what you say after something good has happened, and you're sort of thinking back or talking about it, or remembering how lucky or how thankful you are, how happy you are that this good thing happened. It really helped to save the day. For example, thankfully someone was able to show me the way to the bookstore. So thankfully her family、uh, didn't give up. And I guess I'm, I'm I'm guessing here, but I think I'm right to say thankfully. She did wake up eventually. Thankfully, she did、okay. wake up,、Good、and yes,、news. she. Her story is an amazing one. She's going to fight through all of her problems and really come out on top in the end. Anyways, get this: one day in 2010, Arlen was finally able to send a signal to them, to her family, her family, who her family members. Who had stood at her side for all that time? Here was the signal. She blinked. Okay, and that's important when you're paralyzed and you can't move your body. You can't communicate. Remember, she could hear, but she couldn't speak. And doctors thought that she wasn't going to wake up. But here, here we go. She blinked. She was able to open. And then close her eyes again, and that's how she was able to communicate with her family or to signal to them by blinking. Yes, the word is blink. It's a verb. If you blink, you open and close your eyes quickly. For example, let's play a game. Whoever blinks first is the loser. What a great game! That's called a staring contest. You、mm. can neither break the stare. And you can't blink either. That's right. It's a great way to dry out your eyes.、Mm-hmm. If that's I love staring contests. What you want to do? I love dry eyes. All right. So this was her first message to her parents. Of course, it's a lot easier to blink your eyes than to speak or to write write things. She couldn't do that yet. She had to get her body's strength back. I guess she could have wiggled a finger. Or something that would which is a, a which is a, a very big deal for for, for、sure. patients who are coming back from paralysis. That's right. But by blinking, she shows her parents that her mind is still okay. She's ready to get better. And after that, things did get better. It says after that, she slowly learned how to move, eat, and speak again. It's kind of like being a baby all over. She was practically her old self. In other words, she was practically back to normal. She was practically her old self, except that her legs were paralyzed,、oh. so she could not move her legs, even though the rest of her body was slowly getting back. Yep, and doctors said she would be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life, which was really bad news. But she didn't let this get her down. She continued to fight. Yay, Victoria Arlen! All right, folks. With that, today's lesson is now in the books, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Take care. 刚刚说到亚伦昏迷了三年半，当时医生还说他可能撑不下去。幸好他的家人从来没有放弃他。在二零一零年的某一天，亚伦他终于可以眨眼了，可以向家人发出信号。那在那之后，他还慢慢学会怎么移动、怎么吃饭、怎么说话。几乎有恢复到原本的样子，只是他的双腿瘫痪了。医生说他这一辈子都得坐轮椅。好，那么文中的 wheelchair wheelchair 就表示轮椅。那么 paralyzed paralyzed 则是用来形容瘫痪的。我们最后来看单字 thankfully thankfully， 它是副词，表示幸好或者是感谢的。还有 blink blink。它通常是用来指眨眼这个眨的动作，也可以用来表达灯光的闪烁。那同学们有没有玩过看谁先眨眼就输了的比赛？其实这种比赛它的英文叫做 staring contest， 比赛这样大大眼瞪小眼 staring contest。好了，那么以上是今天的讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍文法重点有五个。第一个是 recall 的用法，第二个是感官动词的用法，第三个是 make it， 第四个是 once old self， 
。第五个是 except 当连接词的用法。好，我们先来学 recall 的用法。动词 recall 表示回忆或是想起，后面你可以接 that 子句，或是接名词，或是动名词，像是嗯 ，I know who he is。But I can't recall his name. 哎，我知道他是谁，可是我想不起他的名字。哎，常常发生，对不对？好，接着我们来学感官动词的用法。感官动词是指看、听、闻、感觉之类的动词，像是 see、watch、listen to、hear、smell、feel 等等。那它的用法有三种。第一种是。感官动词加受词加原形动词，这是用来强调观察到整个过程或是事实。例如 ，The princess likes to hear the birds sing outside her window. 公主很喜欢听鸟儿在她的窗外唱歌。那她不是瞬间听到，而是喜欢全程去听这件事情。好，第二个是感官动词加受词加现在分词，那就是强调观察到动作正在进行，像是 He felt rain falling on his face. 他感觉到雨滴在他的脸上，冷冷的冰雨在脸上胡乱的拍，暖暖的眼泪跟寒雨混成一块。有听过吧？刘德华的。好，第三个是感官动词加受词加过去分词，这表示受词的被动状态。来造个例句 ：I saw a Ferrari parked outside Mia's apartment. 哎，我看到一台法拉利停在 Mia 的公寓外面。哎，好，接着我们来学片语 make it， 它表示成功做到或是达成某件事，也可以表达顺利的抵达某个地方。例如 ，The team made it to the finals. 就是说，那支球队他成功打进总决赛了。好，另外 ，make it 也可以指成功活下来，它的意思就会跟 survive 差不多。像是 she was very ill, the doctor didn't think she'd make it。她之前病得很严重，医生还认为她撑不过这一关了。好，接着我们来学 once old self， 它是指某个人原本的样子，平常的老样子。像是 after a good night's sleep, she felt like her old self again. 好好睡一觉之后，她感觉又回到平常的老样子了。好，最后来学 except 当连接词，它表示只是怎么样，不过怎么样，或者除了什么什么不算之外。那么 except 后面接 that 子句的时候， that 可以省略不用。例如。I would buy her a nice present, except that I don't have enough money. 我很想买一个很好的礼物给她，只是我的钱不够。我很想请你去吃两千块的牛排，可是我钱不够。这大话都可以一直说下去，都不用负责任。好了，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。台湾人常挂在口中的，不好意思，英文有哪些？嗨，欢迎来到就爱讲英文，我是 Holly。呃，呃 ，OK， 不好意思，就 I'm Shane and I'm Holly。OK，OK。Pardon you <笑>。OK， Well， 我刚刚很有礼貌的跟他说、uh, 不好意思。这还有礼貌吗？呃，我觉得我蛮有礼貌的、啊， okay. 所以觉得不好意思，就有点像是在跟人家，就是有点道歉，啊、就是哦，我不小心，嗯、就是在你应该说话的时候说话了，对，应该说打岔了，对，对没错，对。但是有的时候不好意思，也是哎哎、欸欸，不好意思打扰你，就是这种感觉，哎、欸，不好意思，呃，现在几点？对对对，就是打扰一下， right? 就比比如说我们很常会讲，哎哎哎哎，然后就不叫人家名字，这样很没礼貌，所以不能这样子，<笑>对不对？然后<笑>哦，不好意思。那应该水，因为很多台湾人应该有水过 ，Pardon me。Yeah, pardon me.、Uh, uh, pardon me. 哎，我刚刚没有听清楚你说什么 ，Pardon me， 知道吗？不要 ，Pardon me， 听起来很很很古老。对,对，这这个比较正式，这个用语比较正式。那以前就是一那个 King。OK。I pardon you. Oh, 就是比较像是因为之前的古英国的国王好像会赦免一些人的罪，然后他就是用 pardon 这个字。对，所以这样这样好像比较正式了一点。那如果比较不正式的讲法，可以用什么？那就是 excuse me, excuse me. Oh, okay. 就是 excuse me. 我觉得 excuse me 比较好用，比较比较好用。对 ，excuse me 就是 excuse me. What time is it? Or oh, excuse me. Oh, 所以其实它也有点像是。就是不好意思，或者是哦，结果这样子。对、okay, 对对对对。Okay. 那
那如果是道歉 ，sorry sorry about that. You were talking. Sorry about that. 不好意思，对啊，是 sorry about that 也是。Oh, okay. Sorry about that. You you go first. Okay. Sorry. 所以就是哦，抱歉，抱歉。Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. 对对对。那还有就是另外一种表达方式呢。Oh, sorry. My bad. 你你怎么一直在打岔 ？My bad. My bad. My bad. 对，都是你的错。OK， 就是你承认你的错，勇敢承认，人家就会觉得你很有风度，所以是他的错。啊、uh, ，I'm afraid you're wrong.、Huh? Actually, I'm never ever wrong. OK. So I'm afraid you're wrong. OK, so I'm afraid 就是恐怕你是错的这样吗 ？I'm afraid you're not as good as me. <laughs> OK,、Sorry. well. I'm afraid you're wrong, and we're going into live action.、Okay. I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> Come on, he's a toy. All right. Pardon me. Can you tell me what time the bus comes? I'm actually waiting for someone to pick me up, so I don't know. Sorry about that. My bad. I thought you were waiting for the bus. You seem nice. Do you mind if I add you on Instagram? Uh, I'm afraid my boyfriend wouldn't like that. <laughs> so, oh, here he comes now. <laughs> Bye. Number one, pardon me. Number two, excuse me. Number three, sorry about that. Sorry. Number four, my bad. Number five. I'm afraid 